You're listening to Fabulosity, in which we discuss what you bring to the tea party, essentials for the modern heroine. I'm Caroline from Sparkles and Crumbs. And I'm Zandra from Fashionably Light. Welcome to this week's episode, episode four, in which we discuss how to plan a holiday. So basically we thought of this because it's a running joke that I am always planning a holiday. I think it's your life motto, isn't it? It is. And they're always, they're not like huge fanboy ones. Just every couple of months, you need like a weekend away. Somewhere nice. Well, it's nice to have something to look forward to, especially in the dull of winter. <sighs> Winter's so sad. And it's it's really cold here. It's... And just snowed again. I mean, it's... Oh, in Boston? How cold is it in Boston? It's below freezing. Oh! <laughs> yeah, it's like um, 12 degrees cel- uh, Fahrenheit. 12 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, my lovely friend Steph is in Chicago, and it got down to, like, minus 24 there. Yes. So she needs a holiday. Yes, we all need holidays. Um, so before we get into the details of how to go about that, Zandra, what is fabulous in your life today? Well, I just started a new journal. Ooh. So I've been keeping a daily journal since I was like 11 years old. I think I was 11 years old when I made a New Year's resolution to write in a journal every day, even if it was one sentence, and I've kept it up ever since. So it's always nice to crack open a shiny new, in this case, pink journal. So that's my little fabulosity. What is yours? Oh, so mine is, I just... It's just finished, in fact. I just had lots of friends over for a pizza-making party. Awesome. So I decided I really missed Italy, and I put on loads of Dean Martin songs, and lots of lovely people came over, and we had pizza bases and tomato sauce and cheese, and then everyone bought the toppings they wanted. That's fantastic. And we just whacked them all in the oven and had, like, hot spiced rum and Prosecco, and it was good. It was nice. (laughs) So that's another way to indulge in holidayness. Yeah, just pretend you're on holiday if you can't get off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so it's accessible to anyone. Oh, and I should clarify to the American listeners that holiday means vacay. Mm-hmm. Not Christmas holiday. No, not like Thanksgiving, Christmas, Halloween. It means vacation. But it sounds lovelier, I think. I like holiday. Holiday. <laughs> so shall we jump right into it? Yes. So one of the first things, obviously, is choosing the destination. Okay, so since since traveling seems to be one of your hobbies on a frequent basis, how do you choose from all of these lovely places you can go to? Gosh, well, usually somewhere warm. Yes. But I do love European cities, and I kind of limit myself to where I can fly with EasyJet within Europe. Because it's just, mm. compared to flying to America, I know I can do accommodation and flights for like £300 altogether to pretty much anywhere Yeah, in Europe. So I limit myself to that. And yeah, I'm just inspired by gorgeous cities and sunny beaches. So I go back to the same cities over and over again, but I always like going somewhere new as well. So how about you, Sandra? I, I go wherever I have an excuse to go. Um... <laughs> Well, I'm very fortunate in that a lot of my friends live in very interesting places, such as Paris and New York City and my sister's out in California. So I use the excuse of visiting friends to visit new places. And other than that, I get a lot of inspiration from books that I read. I was getting like summoned to Paris with all of the culture I was consuming because (laughs) um, a couple of my best friends live there. And then um, I really love the book Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. And she's a, Anna is a high school student who's going to an American school in Paris. It's just fabulous. Was that recommended on your site? Probably. I recommend it everywhere. It's really lovely. You would love it. It looks really good. It's added on my wish list. (laughs) Yes. Um, And then there's this book series that I would read as a kid called The Amazing Days of Abby Hayes. Where it's a it's like a children's chapter book series of a girl who keeps a journal and tells the story through that, and in like the special episode, um, she goes to Paris. So it's like great, all of these fictional high schoolers are going to Paris. So I probably should get around to it. And then they went there on Gossip Girl, and it looks lovely. Oh, that episode was gorgeous. Yes, where they're just kind of swanning around, eating macaroons, mm-hmm. looking good, <laughs> fabulously dressed as always. Yes crazily dressed for daytime but hey they look great (laughs) um and i think as well 
a lot of people I don't know maybe it's the books and movies they read and watch but some people feel drawn to certain cities Mm -hmm. So I know so many people who watch Sex and the City and Sleeps in Seattle and said, oh, I had to go to New York. Yeah. And I've never felt that way, but I always wanted to go to Rome after I saw Roman Holiday. There you go. I just fell in love with it. And there's so many Audrey Hepburn movies set in Paris mm. and, you know, an American in Paris. There's so many gorgeous old Hollywood movies set there. So I think, and in New York too, like in Affair to Remember. So I think you can, these places have a mythology build up around them and, you get caught up in one in particular, I think, and just want to go there. And when it's in fiction, it's like there's already a, an itinerary built in. Like, I really want to go to Rome and do the Roman holiday itinerary and just go around and do all the things that Oh, Audrey that's did. exactly what I did the first time you were there. <laughs> exactly. Of like, course it we is. Went to, we went to the Mouth of Truth, uh-huh. which unless you know where it is, it's a little hard to find and a bit out of the way. And it was, you know, crazily hot. And I remember dragging my poor friend around the streets of Rome looking for this church. And be like, we have to find it. Gregory Peck and Audrey touched it. <laughs> <laughs> so you found it? Oh, yeah, we found it. We did pretty much everything in the movie. Good. I was so happy. But yes. I still haven't been to Via Marguta, where he lives in the movie. Hmm. Well, you'll just Next have to time. go back. Next, Next time. time. I know. Next oh, time. How sad. I have an excuse to go back. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think we, we generally agree that getting inspiration from your favorite artworks of any kind, be it work, artworks, works of art, your favorite works of art of any mm-hmm. kind, be mm-hmm. it books or movies, TV shows, is often a good way to figure out where to travel. Yes. And I'm quite quick about choosing. I know sometimes I've booked holidays with people who differ a bit about where exactly to go. I like them like, right. I want to go here. I'm going to find somewhere good to stay, get a book flights, done. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you can get to the really good bit, which is planning exactly what you're going to do when you're there. Yes. So what is, <laughs> tell us about your tradition. Oh, God. <laughs> so my tradition is quite a recent one, but I just had so many experiences, particularly in cities like Barcelona and Paris and Rome even, where you get, you get stuck somewhere walking around to a tourist attraction and you get hungry and you end up eating in a really crummy, overpriced tourist trap. Mm-hmm. And it's just really depressing, especially when you're in a gorgeous city where you know there's lots of good food. So I've got in the habit of, before I go, researching all, like, the decent places to eat and drink in the areas where I want to go and where I'm staying. And I put them all together in a big guide for my friends and I when we go. And obviously I Photoshop our faces onto various movies set in those places as the cover of our guides. Obviously. And, you know, people mocked them, but when we went on our girls' <laughs> holiday to Rome, we didn't have a bad meal. And, we f- and you know, you find these crazy places. So I, I make a point to avoid big sites like TripAdvisor or um, kind of guidebooks. And... I look for bloggers who live in or visited that location Mm -hmm. and get their kind of feedback. So I found a great article by a woman who went to Rome and just asked all the taxi drivers there where they ate. And so we, when we went there, we found this tiny little like mafia style restaurant by the Coliseum. It looked like it was closed and it was just full of basically mafia bosses, but we were so out of place, but it was the most delicious carbonara you've ever had. So it's, it's, it's worth doing. I think it's worth, even if you don't use them, even if you do stumble upon those are fabulous places and you're lucky, it's just useful having a little bit of backup. Right. So, you know, you won't have to eat somewhere terrible if you're really stuck, I think. So that's useful. Yeah. And in my case, um, I have to really consider my diet when I travel. So um, I was in Seattle this past summer as my graduation present. And one of the reasons that I picked it is because it's one of the foodie capitals of America, or at least health foodie capitals of America. So I wanted to make sure that I got the best experience and got to all yeah. the, the it places. So um, I planned my itinerary around food. I identified That's all amazing. of the, <laughs> That's totally how I travel now. Because I, I identified these are the places that I definitely want to go to. Okay, which ones have things, other things that I want to do in that area. And then went from the food forwards. I love that idea. Oh, so it's not really food, but wine. My boyfriend and his friend have decided they're going to go do a wine marathon in the south of France. Okay. In the summer. <laughs> so their holiday is just around wine. <laughs> yeah. Well, I really like th- the wine is so inexpensive there. Oh, I love Europe. There's yeah. so much cheap carver. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dream. I really like also having a, a sense of what the local thing is. So like 
Um, you can get really cheap wine that's really good in Europe. Um, you can get pens in Asia that are smaller, <laughs> um, ballpoint pen size than the rest of the world. So like Muji so weird, in Japan. But... Yeah. I really like the really <laughs> skinny pens. They're like 0.38 pens where you usually get like 0. 0.7, 0. 0.5. They just don't sell them anywhere else. That's such like a bizarre quirk to know. I want to go <laughs> buy them. <laughs> well, I like to know these bizarre quirks about places. So you go there and be like, oh, yes, I went here and got the thing. No, but I think kind of trying to get to know before you go mm. doesn't, like, I think the worst thing to do is to be on a really strict itinerary where you're yeah. like, get up at seven. At 7.10, we will eat breakfast. At 7.15, we will be at this monument. I think it's nice to have a bit of freedom mm. to, you know, if you see somewhere awesome, a cool shop or a really nice bar, to duck in and go try it out. But yeah. I think it's just nice having things in the back of your mind that, you know, you can pop into if you get a bit stuck. I think yeah. that's It's nice. a balance. And as you say, like, finding things in the area that are really authentic and local. I mean, I'm going to the Canaries again. <laughs> next month for the end of next month <laughs> welcome back I, oh i can't wait sunshine at last <laughs> but we were looking at kind of all-inclusive resorts which are a bit more expensive and all the reviews were just saying you know it's just you know frozen pizza and burgers in a basement somewhere so i'd yeah. rather just stay in an apartment and go eat delicious tapas and wine on the seafront and spend the money we'd save on that so that sounds fantastic I know. Are you Airbnb-ing it? Yes. Yes, we should talk about Airbnb. <gasps> yes. It has changed my life. So it is Airbnb, the letters, dot com. And essentially, rather than paying a lot of money to stay in a hotel where you're paying for the room service and the cleaning and the reception, which you don't really need, I find, you pay to rent someone else's apartment, which they let out for periods of time. So I first tried it out when we last went on holiday to Gran Canaria in December, and we got the most gorgeous studio apartment on the beach and it worked out about 45 pounds between us per night wow and we've got a we just found a little flat in paris in montmartre for this month and it's 45 pounds for both of us for two nights and they're just crazily inexpensive and i just think a, a really nice affordable way to go see a city and often stay in places you could never afford to stay location wise if you're going for a posh hotel Right, and you get to feel like a local as well, I imagine. You do. We're going to be a little mom Garrett. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how do you book where to stay? Do you look for hotels or... Well, you are usually staying with friends. I mean, well, the past few times I've travelled has been for climbing things, so we've camped in tents. Um, but when I was last in Edinburgh, I was in, at Haggis Hostels. Haggis Hostels? Yep. Is very uh, che cheerily, appropriately named place. I know, I was going to say, such a Scottish name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had a great experience. I'd never stayed in a hostel before, but um, you get exactly what you pay for because they sort of, you pay a certain rate for a all-girls room or a co-ed room, and if you want to buy a towel, you buy a towel, but you, there's nothing that, it's not like a hotel package where you're paying for a lot of things you won't take advantage of. It's sort of on an item-by-item -item basis, which yeah. if you're out all day exploring the city anyway, then you might as well. Yeah, I think so. I When I when I went backpacking in Europe, my friend and I stayed completely in hostels. Mm -hmm. And they do they really vary. Yeah. And I guess it depends on your personality. I think oh, I'm a bit of a snob. <laughs> I kind of like having my own space. Yeah. <laughs> So I don't think I'd stay in a hostel again. But if you, especially if you want to have a really sociable trip and meet lots of people, mm. it can be a really good option because you can come down to the lounge at about ten o'clock at night and people will be up playing cards and going out yeah, dancing. Yeah, that's the other great thing. So our friends at the Heatley Cliff, the podcast that we mutually adore, did an episode. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. It is. It is. Um, they did an episode on how to travel like a rock star on a budget. And their advice was basically pick one thing that you're really keen about, whether it's staying in a luxurious hotel or eating really well or shopping. Just choose one thing if you're on a budget and like go all, all out on that, but then save on the other thing. So if you really want to go shopping in Milan or whatever, then stay in a, a hostel. I think I'd go for the food every time. <laughs> <laughs> what would you go for? Yeah, I'd probably go for the food as well. 
nothing beats really good food yeah because <laughs> I, I tend to like play like we've already established planning my trip around the really good food and then just walking it off in between meals and seeing the sights and taking pictures and things exactly that sounds like the perfect day mm-hmm. <laughs> i also love free things like museums yes and galleries and yeah. views. <laughs> yes and window shopping yes go places that are so far out of your budget that you'll never even be tempted yeah just go in and try them on i sometimes pretend to be rich <laughs> yes this is how i want to... did i tell you this is when i was walking down bond street a couple of Christmases ago and I was wearing my big like, uh-huh. vintage fur coat and I saw there were some security guards standing in the doors of Dior mm-hmm. but they were holding platters with champagne glasses on them so I obviously waltzed in and pretended <laughs> I belonged there and they're like oh hello madam um hibiscus cocktail I was like yes please <laughs> and it was great for like an hour I just wandered around Dior they were doing some kind of event I'd somehow got into and it was Alice in Wonderland themed oh and they had gosh. brownies and I was just chatting with Italian aristocrats Crap, aristocat, <laughs> aristocrat. <laughs> it wasn't like the Disney characters. And trying on dresses was like living in a dream. If it, it were Alice good. in Wonderland themed, I wouldn't be surprised if they were the Disney aristocats. <laughs> <laughs> they just popped up and they were real. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would be. Oh, that sounds so lovely. But yeah, no. Well, so the heat cliff are great. I think. So you're talking about having vegan considerations for your holiday. So Mm -hmm. Victoria Vivace, Vivace, I think that's how you pronounce it, is absolutely amazing. And she's um, visually impaired. So she wrote a really great guide about planning a holiday for someone you know who's blind or visually impaired. Oh, wow. And just little things to take into consideration and where you'd stay and the kind of places you need to look for and the kind of attractions it's ideal to have around and what facilities you need to bear in mind. So that's really useful if you're doing that because obviously it opens up a whole extra level of things to look out for when you're planning ahead. Yeah. The um, internet in general is great for these things. Oh, it's so useful. So you're quite a fan of um, travel books as well as blogs. Oh, I love travel books. Yeah, um, my criteria for travel books is they have to be pretty. (laughs) It's a good criteria. Like, you know what I mean? There are a lot of, you go to the travel section of a bookstore and a lot of them are like, travel in um, really bold and ugly thoughts. Um, So I'm just like, it's so aesthetic and displeasing. (laughs) It is. That is exactly what I meant. Yeah. But I really like the wallpaper city guides. They're those little tiny books that are, that have a white stripe at the top. Then the rest of it is all a solid, a solid color that is somewhat indicative of what the city is like like boston is sort of a teal greeny blue and seattle Ooh. is gray what's rome yeah do you know what's rome uh i don't know we'll have to look it Should up I look it up now see the show notes oh, okay put it in the show notes <laughs> <laughs> yes we'll, we'll put a link to the wallpaper colors um but that's really lovely because they're all the same um compact size that you can just throw in your handbag and they're organized by um aesthetically pleasing things so architecture and culture and really nicely designed restaurants that are sort of iconic to the cities so it's a good starting point that's good i just looked up the wallpaper guide for rome oh yeah it's bright pink Ah! (laughs) so appropriate yeah you gotta get one now yeah you should everyone should sorry you were saying they're not sponsoring (laughs) i love wallpaper yeah oh and the best part about wallpaper is in the back they have a map of the city and it's color coded by different neighborhoods, and it gives you like a one line description of what the personality of the neighborhood is. I think my only problem with travel books is one, I, I don't like carrying anything more around than I need to, so I'll often condense anything I find into my own little paper guide that I just carry with me. And also, sometimes they can be out of date because things change so quickly, especially in mm. cities that blogs can sometimes be more updated. Yeah, I, that's what I like about the wallpaper one is that. It's so condensed that, yeah, okay, one place that I've looked up so far has been shut down. But since it only lists a few places, they're usually, like, the tried and true places that have been there yeah. forever. Um, but, yeah, yeah, that's a, a case when it would be better to look at blogs. And my favorite thing is just ask people you know and ask Facebook. Yes. Yeah. Or if you go to um, not necessarily a travel blogger's website, but... They're obviously great for this purpose, too, but just your favorite blogger's website um, and just search for the place that you're going to in case they've been there. Oh, they yeah. Might. 
have some ideas well when i went to barcelona last year i mean i know that i know the city quite well and i love it but i wanted to see if there are any new places to discover so i sent kind of a message out on twitter and facebook and one of my readers actually lived in barcelona for years and sent me this amazing list of places to go and i tried a couple and they were all delicious <laughs> she was saying you know um give me a message um if you get stuck or want anywhere else to go and that's really helpful it's like having your own little guide to the yeah. city and so she writes The Cafe Cat and City Kitty. And she writes all about Barcelona. So she was really useful. So what is like a, tr- a typical, what is a typical travel day like for you? What's your dream itinerary? Oh my gosh. Go to the airport lounge. Lounge around in luxury. <laughs> have a gorgeous flight with a bit of cava. Land somewhere. What is the, um, what is in an air- airplane, <gasps> airport lounge? Oh my gosh. So it's the Gatwick Lounge. You pay £22 uh-huh. pounds and it's this beautiful white wrought iron glass walled kind of beautiful hotel style place and it's unlimited drinks of every kind so wine, sparkling wine, beers, fruit juice, coffee, tea and um, you get one delicious gourmet hot meal and there's a buffet of cheese and brownies and snacks and there's a little wow. spa and a giant cinema with popcorn and a huge what? beat. Yeah, it's insane for £22. And magazines to take away and huge oh. swinging chairs from the ceiling and a games room. And it's just gorgeous. It's just, if you're going to be at the airport and if you're going off on a holiday, I would fully recommend it for starting your holiday in style. It's just, it just keeps going on and on. I know. It was amazing. And for, you know... So we were on a two o'clock flight. We we kind of got there a little bit early and went to the lounge. But we'd have spent, you know, at least fifteen pounds getting lunch and snacks for the long flights and things for the plane. So it's, I think it's more than worth it to sit somewhere gorgeous. <laughs> so we start with that, and then ideally teleporting rather than getting on a flight. That'd be nice, and then end up in Rome or some other gorgeous European city in the summer wander the streets, get some delicious street food, see some architecture, and end up on the beach at sunset. I think that'd be perfect, having some kind of sea to tap us. How about you? Well, you've pretty much described a perfect day, except mine would definitely include some local theater. And then just food. And finding little independent boutiques and places to shop and talk to people with lots of pictures and lots of walking. Oh, yeah, definitely. My dad's hilarious, so he gets very confused when we go to new countries and they talk to him in a different language. Oh. We were leaving a shop once in Italy and the lovely shop just went kind of like, Buona serata. So, you know, have a good evening. He was like, Buona serata? Buona serata? What, what, what is it? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> so embarrassing. <laughs> I would recommend getting a little pocket phrase book if you're going to yeah. a country where you don't speak the language. It's amazing how how much you can get by with just the basics yeah i think i always put that in my little my famous little holiday guides so Yay. i always and i think it's really respectful to be able to say hello please thank you and do you speak english in the language mm-hmm. of the place you're going mm-hmm. because there'd be nothing more annoying than walking around your city and someone walks up to you and just assumes you speak another language right even if you do i mean it's just it's just basic politeness to learn the basic language for where you're going yeah i find that even if you don't, even if you're not, they don't care if you're fluent. They just care that you try. Oh, no. I think, like, people do respect that you're not just walking up to them being a brash English tourist. Right. <laughs> Let's be respectful of the rest of the world, guys. That's the fabulosity way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, great. So, well, I guess on that, do we have any mm-hmm. other business? Well, we have some shout outs we- in our correspondence se- section this week i'd like to send a shout out to our token male listener clay from hey i'm clay (laughs) yes you're fantastic um and a thank you to Kristen from my life is a teacup for mentioning us in her links love roundup and so did pearl so did pearl from pretty mayhem oh really yay Uh, we love the mention yay And so feedback on the kind of dessert-themed episode last week, Valerie from Sincerely Valerie says she wants to try dessert recipe with Nutella in it. So if any Nutella fans have any good tips or links, send them in. My favorite thing to do with Nutella is just eat it with any fruit. 
like bananas or apples. Just eat it. Yeah, just eat it. But seriously, because there used to be there used to be a a crepe van right outside my room, like um, about oh, a minute how away. You, how are you not the size of like a pig? <laughs> because of Nutella. So the, the <laughs> <laughs> seriously, the crepe that I would always get was banana and Nutella, and I figured, well, it's like five pounds to get that and sugar and flour and it's not totally healthy but if i just stock up on bananas and a huge vat of nutella then that saves my my pocket and my um my need to walk about 15 paces (laughs) well and also valerie you can get a nutella themed cookbook which is in the shape of a nutella jar (gasps) that's adorable i'll put a link to it on amazon okay um my boyfriend's little sister has it because she's obsessed with Nutella and it's really good. It has all the different things you can cook with Nutella and some of them are just bizarre. You would never guess. <laughs> mm. Well, sounds like a good start. Yeah. And um, Sarah from The Laughing Medusa recommended Chocolate Covered Katie for more vegan and healthy desserts. Mm. So check that out. ChocolateCoveredKatie.com. Exciting. And so we'd obviously, as always, love to hear your thoughts on this week's topic. And also, we should let you know what's coming up next week. So our next episode is episode five, in which we discuss the benefits of a stroll. So do send us any ideas you have for that. And we will see you next Friday. Friday tea time. Bye. Woo. <laughs>